Hi, my name is Mrs. Kathy, and I'm with Covina Valley Unified Schools. This is our first tutorial for clarinet, which we will be putting on k5tunes.com. The first thing we want to talk about is when you're thinking about playing an instrument, your posture needs to be really great. So if you're sitting, you want to make sure that you're sitting with your back nice and straight and tall, and the core of your body uh, nice and tall as well. Sometimes the chairs that you sit in will allow you to sit back a little bit, but most of the time you might be more comfortable sitting on the front edge of your chair. So you want to kind of scoot up just a little bit on the front edge of your chair. We're going to be looking at the clarinet today, and clarinets, uh, the one that we're going to be doing is the B-flat clarinet, and uh, we're going to be looking at how we put the clarinet together. Very, very important. And at first, you might think that it's quite time consuming, but as you get used to it and get more practice in, you'll find that putting your clarinet together is not quite so big a deal. I have here the clarinet case, and you want to make sure that when you put the clarinet, or when you take the clarinet out of the case, that you have it sitting on a table, or maybe a chair next to you, or even the floor is good. If you try to do it with it sitting on your lap, you're going to find that it's quite cumbersome and that pieces might be flying and we don't want that to happen since the clarinet is an expensive instrument. So you want to open the clarinet case and inside you're going to find many pieces. The first one that I want to talk to you about are the reeds because the reed we want to make sure that we get the reed nice and wet before we ever even put it on the clarinet mouthpiece. So I have here a number one and a half reed. Um, a reed is just a little piece of um, wood that's been shaped in just the right fashion. You want to make sure that you don't get a saxophone reed. The clarinet reeds are a little bit skinnier than the saxophone reed. And uh, you were instructed to purchase 10 reeds. Now you might think that might be a little excessive, but actually, especially at the beginning when you first start to play the clarinet, it's very hard to keep a reed in good shape because our teeth kind of get in the way or we might snag it on clothes or not know exactly how to put it on correctly the first few times. So parents out there, don't be afraid to send your students to school with all 10 reeds. They won't share them. They're not going to give them away. They are their reeds to keep. But if you just send your student with one reed and then something happens, um, that's going to be problematic for them to try to play during class time. So make sure that they have all 10 reeds with them. And th the clarinet case is pretty great because it usually has a place for you to put extra supplies. So I've gotten one of my reeds out of the case and I'm going to go ahead and put it in my mouth very carefully not to make sure that my teeth don't accidentally chip the reed because the reed in the top edge is very, very thin and it's very easy for it to crack or break. You want to inspect your reed because if you have a reed that's cracked or kind of um, jagged on the edge, it will not work on your clarinet. And so you can blow and do all the things right on your clarinet, put your hands in the right place. But if your reed is bad, it will not make a sound. So you want to make sure that that reed is nice. So technically, a good thing to do would be to go ahead and put your reed in your mouth, getting it nice and wet as you're putting the instrument together. But I want to talk to you while I'm putting my instrument together. So I'm just going to gently lay my reed back down. But it's a good practice for you to keep the reed in your mouth, being very careful not to get it, um, uh, to jag it up with your teeth. So the first thing I want to look at now is <clears throat> the two pieces of the body. Now you notice that the body parts are the parts that have the keys on them. And some of the edges, or some of the ends, have a place where you have cork. And the cork, especially if this is a brand new instrument, may need to have a little bit of lubrication. So we're going to take something that looks like chapstick, but you don't want to put this on your lips. This is actually cork grease. And you want to just wind it up like you would a little piece of, uh, a little tube of chapstick, and put just a little bit on the edges right where your cork is. And if you have an older instrument, this is an older instrument, so I don't really need to have a whole lot. In fact, this instrument probably doesn't need any cork grease at this point. Because as the instrument gets a little bit older, it really doesn't require a whole lot of cork grease. But if you have a brand new instrument, you're going to find that the instrument pieces fit together pretty tight, and that will help it go together better. Now, I have a little 
quandary here because how does this go together? Well, the thing is, is that you're only going to be able to put the pieces together in one way. So you can just try to experiment and go, well, this doesn't really feel like it goes together very well. This obviously doesn't do. So you just start kind of experimenting, twisting them around, and finally you're going to find that the only two ends that will fit together fit together very nicely. Now, I'm going to try to do this without squishing down too hard on the keys. So I'm going to twist and push in. Twist and push in. You notice that I didn't just try to push it on. And I certainly wouldn't try to set it down on something and then pop it in. So I'm going to twist and push. And as I do, I'm going to find that lining up the keys, these whole keys here, is going to allow for a very certain special something to happen. There are two little rods right here that have to line up and one actually goes under the other. And if those are not lined up and, and one is not right under the other, then your keys actually will not function correctly. So you want to make sure that your whole keys are lined up and that this little tab here is under. Then we want to take our bell section and once again, obviously this isn't going to work. This is too loose. So we only have one option here. Once again, avoiding squishing down too hard on the keys, but twisting and pushing, twisting and pushing. You notice how I twisted. I didn't just take the, the uh, bell section and just pop it on once more. Um, actually, the clarinet feels like a pretty strong, pretty sturdy instrument, but there are so many different keys on it that it actually could uh, malfunction if you start to kind of push things together incorrectly. So we want to twist and push. Next we have the barrel. And the barrel has a kind of thicker end and a thinner hole. A wider hole and a thinner hole. And the wider hole is going to fit. If you try to do the thinner, obviously that's not going to work. So we have the thinner hole. Okay. Then we have, by the way, we don't want to set our instrument up on a table or on the floor or in a chair like this. We want to always set it down because we never know when just the slightest little bump might just make it fall. So we want to always set it down. It could be setting down, sitting down on your lap, you could set it down on the table, you could set it down on a chair next to you, even on the floor, out of people's feet uh, way is better. So now we have the mouthpiece. And you notice that I took off a cover off the mouthpiece. Some have this, some do not. If yours doesn't, don't worry about it. So I'm going to take the cover off and I want to show you another very important part of the clarinet. It's called the ligature. So this is the ligature and you notice that it has a thinner side and a fatter side. It has two screws and the fatter side is going to be actually attaching onto your mouthpiece like this. If you try to do it upside down, it, you notice that it doesn't go on all the way. Sometimes students are wondering why their ligature isn't working, why their reed isn't staying on, and it's because the ligature is upside down. So we want to make sure that it's the correct way with the fatter side going down. Now I haven't added the reed yet, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take my reed, and you notice that it has a flat side, and it has a side that has a little ridge on it. The flat side goes right up against the part of the mouthpiece that has the hole. So you're going to put that right up here. And you notice that I'm taking my thumb and holding on to the entire reed with the mouthpiece. And I want to aim the reed with my other hand. I want to aim the reed so that the reed is just slightly above the top of the mouthpiece. If it's way above like this, your mouthpiece is going to crack. If it's way down below, too much air is going to escape and you're not going to be able to have a nice buzz and a nice um, vibration coming from the mouthpiece. So what you want to do 
is just line it up so that it's just slightly above. And then you're going to take your ligature, which has already been unscrewed just a little bit. You don't have to unscrew it the whole way. Remember, the bottom side is the side that's the widest. And you're going to put the ligature right over the reed. And you want to come down far enough to where it's going to hold onto the reed past this little bump part. If you try to attach it way up here, your reed's never going to be tight enough. If you, if you do it way too low, then you're going to find also that your ligature won't get uh, loose enough for that. So once again, I want to align my reed, and then I'm going to tighten just tight enough to hold the reed on, making sure that the screws, when I'm looking at the reed, that the screws are on the right side. So I'm tightening with my right hand and tightening away from me. When I end up taking the reed off, I'll do just the opposite. I'll kind of hang on to the reed down here and, un and loosen them up like that. So I have my reed on my mouthpiece right now, and I'm going to be putting my mouthpiece onto the barrel. Now I want again, once again want to twist and push. Now let's say that I have my mouthpiece on but it's not lined up where I need it to be. That can be easily corrected by turning the entire barrel. Don't try to just turn your mouthpiece because if you do that you notice that I'm touching the reed and we want to try to avoid touching the reed. So I can actually just turn the whole thing and what I want to do is aim it so that the back of the clarinet, which is just this one hole in the thumb rest, is lined up with my reed. And I need to turn that just a little bit more so that it's lined up. So when I'm playing the instrument, I want to make sure that the reed is on my bottom lip. So this would be incorrect if I'm playing with the reed on my top lip. So I want to make sure that I've turned the whole thing around and the reed is on the bottom lip. So this gives you an idea of how to put the clarinet together. Next time we'll be looking at how to play our first note. This is k5tunes.com. We'll see you next time.